Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well today as always. Got a lot of exciting stuff uh, to share with you in this vlog today. There's some lights that I picked up throughout the week here that uh, we'll take a uh, video clip of here in a second um, that I've been looking for for a very long time. So there's that. There's yet another unboxing. I, we won't do them after this for a while, I guarantee you that. And then, um, yeah, whatever else we get into. So I suppose we'll get started. The good old Mac Mini. When I picked up this M1, it was the first of the M series. In fact, it was the first ever to come out with it. It was this, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro were the first three models to get the M1 chip. Now, I didn't jump aboard the M1 train right away. I got this probably a year later, um, but I've been very impressed with it, and I've used it for all my video editing until I recently got the M2 MacBook Pro here that you've seen in a, another recent video. So, um, one thing that I've wanted to do is always try to keep a little current in some area of computing, and I've decided to do that with the Mac Mini here. Every generation they come out with one, I'd like to get it, so I'm going to try to save up for that each time. Therefore, as you've probably heard, the M2 Mac Mini has come out, and not only just an M2, but a M2 Pro Mac Mini. That is right, this is the M2 Pro base model. It's not fancy, specced out like I did with the um, 14 inch MacBook Pro here where I got the Pro processor with the, I think it's 12 cores and 19 graphics cores. This one has 10 cores with, I think, 16 graphics cores. So it's a, um, I've heard people call it the binned version. It just has a little less going on. Anyway, this is going to replace the Mac Mini, or the M1 here specifically. Now, I think the biggest jump here is going to be from eight gigs of RAM to 16. While this thing can do really well with all my 1080p video editing, I don't do 4K, I don't really understand a use for it really, um, 8 gigs sometimes is right at the max of the memory pressure when you look at it in the, um, the um, I'll think of it, system resources application or whatever. So it's going to be nice to have the 16 gigs. So let's go ahead and see what's inside. Of course, on the front of the packaging, we just have a picture of the Mac Mini. It is actual size, I do believe. And around the sides, we just have Mac Mini. And that's really it. It's quite a big package um, compared to the 2018 Intel model, which was thinner. Uh, the packaging was anyway. Although the M1 Mac Mini came in the same size box as this one, so I'm sure there's no difference here. And that's probably why it also doesn't say like M anything, you know, M2 or M whatever, because they can just reuse the same packaging. On the back, we can see this is the 16 gig, 512 gigabyte SSD version uh, with the 10 core, 16 core M2 Pro chip. It'll be interesting to see uh, the difference between this lower spec uh, M2 Pro and the uh, higher spec M2 Pro that I have in the laptop. Now, like I've said, uh, this is something I'd like to upgrade each generation, um, but not necessarily the laptop. I don't really feel a need for that one, especially when those are so much more money uh, than these. Anyway, we have two tabs here uh, to pull up. And one more. Now, if I remember correctly, the M1 did not come with these tabs on it. It was shrink-wrapped in plastic, so that must have been their last one that they did that with. Let's open it up. There it is. How interesting. You know, usually they got some type of plastic or something on here, uh, but there's nothing. There's, there's nothing, you know, like the laptop, for example, when we unbox that, it came in a sleeve. There's no sleeve here, which again, they're being more sustainable. I believe everything here is recycled, recycled aluminum, recycled plastic, recycled cardboard, everything's recycled as far as my understanding. So of course we have the Apple logo here on the top, we have our plastic here on the back and the bottom. 
So let's go ahead. Nice. Just set that aside for the moment. It still says Mac Mini on the bottom. And on the back here, let's see, do we have a tab? Yes, we do. Now, the first thing you'll notice, compared to the M1 and even the M2 version, as far as I, my understanding, is that the M2 Pro has two extra USB-C, or Thunderbolt, ports. Um, interesting here, I don't remember if the... Maybe the M1 Pro didn't have that thing. Maybe it was just the M1 version where they had two Thunderbolt and then two regular USB-C on the iMac. Um, here they must all be Thunderbolt. So there's not any that are faster than others. It is nice to still have the regular USB here on the end. Wonderful. I don't even know if the uh, Mac Studio has that, um, but it's definitely nice to have here for sure. And I've heard a lot of things about some new standard of HDMI here as well. I will be using a USB-C monitor, so whatever to that. Still have our little status light here on the front. And that's really about it. So let me grab something to compare it with. So the Mac Studio does have standard USB on the back. Can you tell which one is which? Well, maybe. This one's a little dirtier. But this is the very first unibody Mac Mini. This is the 2010 version. It was the very first and last of these unibodies to have a disk drive on it after they went to the 2012 or I'm sorry 2011 model. They got rid of the CD DVD drive. So this was the very first all aluminum unibody Mac Mini. You can see all the ports here on the back. 2010 the very first and last of the unibody to have the disk drive and the most recent now. I believe they're pretty much exactly the same for height. Yep. So 2010 and 2023. And here you can see how much the ports have changed on the back. I wouldn't be surprised if the power supply is still the same. One thing we didn't do was check uh, whatever is left in the box here. So, of course, we have our power cord here in the bottom. And Mac Mini. And one <laughs> really big Apple sticker. I do not remember what came with the M1. I still have it in its box somewhere if it was two separate ones or one big one. But as always, we'll just leave it there. Pretty simple. I don't think I'll be using the power cord, uh, mostly because I'm gonna put it right in place of the M1. And then the M1 is going to go and replace another one. So I suppose we'll talk about that. The M2 Pro Mac Mini is going to replace the M1 here on the main setup. And the M1 is going to replace the 2010 Mac Mini uh, for the projector uh, TV watching setup. So this is used for watching TV shows, online streaming, movies, whatever that you would like a computer for. And of course, it was nice because it had a drive on it, but there's plenty of other consoles here that can play uh, CDs and DVDs and whatnot. So that's not a big problem anymore. My friends slash roommates have accounts on this computer. So this is the first time I'm going to try using the Migration Assistant. I've never used it before. I always set up computers from scratch. But I think it'll be the easiest way to move over all of their accounts and everything in you know, just one big go without having to reset everything up and move it all over and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to give that a try. And um, we'll see what we get out of it. Boy, this thing boots up fast, naturally. I had to pull out the LG monitor here because um, I can't plug in this one, for example. It's mini display port, and uh, I need this monitor for that one at the moment. So, 
here we go. And uh, it's starting to look more and more like Windows asking to do updates. Right when you unbox a thing, you know, why not enjoy the computer right when you got it? No, you got to download some updates and then you're allowed to enjoy it. So I guess we'll do that. After the update, it decided to adjust its screen resolution apparently. So we'll continue on. We're moving right along here. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever used the Migration Assistant, and you can indeed connect it with a Thunderbolt or USB-C type cable here. I'm not using the Apple one. This is a StarTech one that I actually use with the Mac Pro over here, um, but it works perfectly fine and definitely gets some much higher speeds than if you were to do peer-to-peer -peer over a Wi-Fi network or something. So this is going really fast. When it first started doing it, it said it was going to take like a couple days. Um, but I've been sitting here for maybe two minutes and we've already gotten this far. So definitely recommend uh, doing a Thunderbolt connection between your two computers because this goes much faster. I sat here for maybe five minutes and it transferred 40 gigabytes worth of data within that time. Very impressive. And it looks like it's going to restart here. Everything is set up on the M2 Pro, and everything is deleted and reformatted on the M1. So we'll move the M2 Pro to the M1 and the M1 to its new home in the Media Center. And now everything is in its new home, all ready to be enjoyed. Not bad for 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't remember if I've shared in the previous video or clip or not, but my friend has saved up and finally got his half rack here. He's been waiting to get this for a quite a long time. So I uh, helped him put that together and I know he absolutely loves it because he uses it a lot. And uh, there's of course the bench and he moves it in and out to of course do different types of workouts. And there's his bike in the corner that he continues to work on. But other than that, this area is looking pretty good. And I'm glad these fluorescent lights are working well for him as well. As I showed you earlier in the week, these fixtures here, and they're still sitting on the workbench here. Obviously, it's now the weekend, so we're going to play with them. But before I do that, we're going to make some videos of them and some other items. So I'm going to set up for that. First have to lay out the parrot towel. I got this all the way back in I think 2009 or 10 in Florida at a store called Bell's, I believe was the name of it. Then you gotta plug in the test power strip into yet another one, I suppose. Then set up the light meter. The most annoying thing about this thing is this wire, to be honest. Then we gotta plug our kilowatt meter in, so we'll do that. And of course we have all of our adapters here and our main wire. Um, of course, we'll just use whatever we need. Then you got to set up the tripod. The only thing I don't like about this is that I'm standing right here. So this thing's kind of in the way. I really need to figure out something that holds it up like right here, but um, we'll eventually get there. This works fine. And last, but certainly not least, of course, you need something to make a video on. Decided to put the old 486 AT computers away for the moment. Um, I decided that I had good enough progress with the one, even though I can't get the hard drives to be uh, able to show up correctly, but that's okay. We'll work on that another time. Anyway, moving on, uh, I've been using this one a lot lately, this 500 megahertz uh, Pentium 3 slot 1 machine. It has 64 megs, a 32 and 32 for a total of 128 megabytes of RAM. Um, but I'm starting to mess with this one here, this Compaq. It looks like it has its original 128 megabyte stick. And it also had this one in it, this 128 megabyte stick. But I was curious as to what was in this machine. So I opened it up and you can, well, I closed it now, but it's the exact same stick. It's the exact same one as this. And when I first opened it up, the RAM uh, slots were open like this, so it looks like someone took it out of that machine to give to this machine. So that's my guess as to um, where this one came from. It's originally from that Windows 2000 thing. Anyway, um, I'm going to take this out just for now and 
see what to do with it, but I'm going to set up this computer for use at work uh, to run some old programs that we need uh, to program washers and dryers. So uh, this is perfect. Uh, the old program was built for Windows 95, so Windows 98 is right there next to it. I don't see why it wouldn't work, so that's what we're going to do here. I believe I shared in a previous video that picked up these hard drives here. They're 10 gigabyte drives uh, for $5 a piece. Um, I'm sure one of them will work. I believe they're tested. And I'm going to put that in here. Now, I think the original drive was 30 gigs, but we don't need a lot of space to run this little program, so that's not a problem. Um, talking about the RAM, since it's such a small program, I'm just going to leave the original 128 megabyte stick in there that it came with and uh, see if I can use this one in one of the other machines. So that's what we're gonna do. Get one of these drives in here and uh, see where we can go from there. I was just about to vacuum out the compact here and I noticed something right there. That looks a little sad. Definitely will have to be replaced. I removed the capacitor. Here it is. And cleaned up the area the best I could. So now I guess we'll go looking for some new ones. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Uh, that was one dryer. <coughs> that was. So yeah, another dryer's on one of these other breakers. As always, I hope you enjoy these videos, and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.